about Brazil and thank you also Derechos Digitales for this partnership that involves this project and also other projects we we admire we admire you a lot. Let me put my time in here so I don't get lost. So I will talk a little about internet access in Brazil, focusing on Amazonia. And uh, beyond talking about this research, I will also put some uh, inputs related to internet access researches that we have in EDEC. We have a series of seven researches that we have published related to school access, 5G, related to mobile, internet, broadband, and I will talk about uh, some of the findings while I explain more about this research. But I will focus on, on this main research. But first of all, let, let us understand the Brazilian context of that. Uh, in Brazil, we have advanced a lot on internet access, but we still lack meaningful connectivity. Brazil is full of contradictions and ambiguities related to inequalities in general and internet access is not different from that. We have inequalities related to economic inequalities, regional inequalities in different regions of Brazil. We are focusing on the north region today. Uh, also in localities in terms of urban and rural areas and also depending on companies' interests on these areas. Also, we have advanced on some policies related to telecommunications, but we still uh, have some challenges related to the coordination of these public policies, which brings challenges related to how can we promote universalization of internet access. It's also important to highlight that in the last few years, regulation has been reduced by the, the previous government. So uh, the... Um, the goal to uh, to achieve universalization of internet access was really harmed by by these policies. But with uh, this government, meaningful connectivity is a priority. So we are hopeful to advance on that, and also hopeful to use a fund of universalization universalization of internet access, prioritizing the regions that suffers the most, especially the north region. So I will focus on that. Let me talk a little about the research that uh, Derechos Digitales conducted with us. So this research focused on a community called Nossa Senhora do Livramento, which is almost 30 kilometers far away from the capital of Amazonas. Uh, so it's uh, far away from boat. It's not that distant, but uh, it's by boat. So uh, it's a place that lacks um, infrastructure in general. Let me contextualize, before talking about the research, let me contextualize about the north region in Brazil. The, nor the north region, uh, the northern region, is the biggest one in Brazil. It's the poorest one, too, and it occupies 40% of the Brazilian territory. It has seven states, but faces lots of challenges and has lots of conflicts related to environmental and humanitarian um, reasons. The Amazonian community is very diverse and has a specific uh, subjectivity. And uh, outside people uh, have this imaginary on, uh, that, uh, that not um, understand the, the complexity and the difference that is present in there. But uh, we, we didn't focus on the entire Amazonian community in Brazil, which couldn't be done. It's, it's very diverse, but we focus on this, this specific community. This is a place that has approximately 300 people, and we conducted this research with 40 questions related to socioeconomic background, internet access, internet use, and its limits and, and possibilities. Uh, we interviewed 12 people of this community um, with a difference of gender, race and ethnicity, and especially indigenous peoples, people from Baré, Miranha, De Sana, Mura, and Mukushi, difference of age and also classes. And what we did, what did we find? First of all, uh, some structural uh, concerns, some structural uh, issues is that this this uh, specific um, community is uh, present in a place uh, that face challenges related to climate change. So uh, related to uh, rains and also uh, dry soil. Because of that reason, infrastructure is hard to advance. So because also of these natural problems, it's hard to have infrastructure in there. Beyond that, uh, they face challenges related to 
electricity. So beyond not accessing internet, they also some people don't also have electricity in general. But what did we find? We find as we expected that the scenario is excluded. We have inequalities on internet access, high prices, low quality, and uh, the uh, normally they use uh, internet access in the mobile phone. So it's important to pause and also talk about the difference in Brazil of the mobile phone in relation to broadband. Broadband in Brazil is based on uh, speed and uh, mobile, f mobile internet is based on data franchise. What happens? If you have a low cost of data franchise, you cannot buy sufficient data franchise for the entire month. So what happens is that people don't have internet for the whole month, and they, they don't have internet to explore the potentialities of internet. So I will, I will highlight two things related to that. First of all, people are using internet mostly uh, related to social media. So People are dependent on big techs. People are dependent on also exploration of, for example, privacy issues. Second thing, EDI conducted a research that uh, the, the poorer classes in Brazil have internet only for 21 days a month. So for a one week, at least, people don't have internet. They don't have internet to reach out for their family, to reach out for help, and they also don't have internet, for example, to access a uh, health, um, health uh, system if they need. So this is a big challenge. Also related to which, um, I to using the cell phone instead of using a big screen um, apparatus. I forgot the word, sorry. Uh, beyond that, um, internet is a new technology for lots of these people, so they still have to advance on internet literacy. It's important to focus on this because beyond infrastructure, they still have to learn how to develop the potentialities of internet beyond social media. They lack knowledge, unfortunately. And one thing that is very specific, and I would also love to talk about you uh, about that, is that, and I'm talking not only about the research, but I'm also talking about the Brazilian context right now. People want to advance on internet access, but they are willing to advance in any way. One concern that we have right now in the Amazonian region is the dependency on Starlink, which is uh, related to Elon Musk. And Related to Starlink, we are concerned about uh, digital sovereignty, about uh, environmental issues related to satellites also, and how the government didn't make a full uh, partnership. Th they made a partnership with, Star with Starlink, but it's not official. So it's a little sketchy how Starlink is advancing and how people can be dependent just on Starlink and we, will, we could have uh, a monopoly company in there. To end uh, um, about the, the findings of the, the research, three of these 12 people didn't use internet at all and sev seven of them just use it mobile internet. So that's why I highlighted these issues. And five of them could afford uh, broadband internet, but since they don't have sufficient infrastructure, uh, they still face some challenges on internet quality. Also, another research of us, also with Derechos Digitales, about uh, the North region found, found out that the prices can vary 200 times per megabyte in the North region, which is absurd. People cannot access internet with these prices, and they don't have uh, the same amount of quality as capitals. How can we advance on that? This is a, a challenging scenario, right? And it's not only related to Brazil, it's related to the whole region. But in relation to Brazil, uh, we have to remember that internet is a uh, is essential service in Brazil. And we have to advance on the universalization. We have to enhance public policy related to the use of funds, to, to the universalization of internet access. And both the states and the, the cities have to collaborate also with that. Also, we have some alternatives. Beyond depending on the big companies, we could also think about community networks. And I would love to, to hear uh, talking more about that. So that is the scenario we hope we can advance on that, but having this data can help us talk with the government and uh, find solutions on, on all of that. So thank you for the opportunity.
No, thank you, Camila, for joining us today. Thank you for all the people who has come to the session. We know it's early. Uh, also, thank you to all the people that's following the this session on Zoom and on YouTube. Um, it's late in Latin America where most of them are, so uh, we really appreciate the, the effort. Um, and right, as you said, like there's a big challenge that has to do how to advance with um, universal access and meaningful access. And that's why I think it's very interesting to have Carlos here today. You can tell us a little bit about those uh, alternatives to like these big companies that is, is uh, Elon Musk satellites and all that. So uh, I'm going to pass the, the, the word to Carlos. Uh, Carlos Baca, he, uh, he has a PhD and a master degree from the Autonomous University of Puebla, BUP. BUPA, sorry, BUAPA. Sorry, <laughs> and a bachelor's degree in communication sciences from UDLAP. He, since 2019, he's part and is a, a manager of the training program in ICT network management in indigenous and rural communities in Latin America, and also uh, part of the LockNet initiative by Rizomatica and APC, coordinating the capacity building area and the national schools of community networks in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Is that right? <laughs> so, go ahead. Hi, 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 everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to to share this share this session with you, and uh, of course, I I am very thankful because you are here in this uh, early uh, session. So, I I want to focus not not so much in the challenges that uh, have been addressed in this in all these. Uh, uh, reports, but more like in the uh, alternatives uh, we need to develop in this area. So I will uh, start with my uh, with a little presentation. I I want to share with you some photos, and you can travel a little bit to the Amazon region. So uh, so we we I will be talking uh, about two different uh, initiatives, very different. Uh, and uh, how uh, we can learn some things uh, in through these processes of developing community networks in the region. So the first one is, is the National School of Community Networks that have been developed in, uh, in Brazil since 2021, and uh, is, is one of, of these five national schools. In, uh, we have other ones in Indonesia, Sudafrica, Kenya, and Nigeria. And just to say very quick that uh, we each of these schools have three different stages. One of the design, the collective design of the school with uh, a lot of people involved on that. Then the implementation of the school. And then the last phase that uh, was a mentorship and a little micro grant for the organization who uh, took part of the, of the school. So the Brazilian uh, one, uh, was developed by uh, Proyectos Salud uh, uh, Alegria, I, I can pronounce <laughs> it, it well in Portuguese, and it, it have their place in, in six communities in the north of Brazil, in three different states, in Acre, uh, in Amazonas, and in Pará. And uh, as, as Camila said, very, very different communities, no? very, very different uh, ways of living, and uh, very, very, very far between each other. So uh, it is, it is uh, a challenge how to develop this uh, there. And I have uh, one bad news <laughs> because, uh, you know, uh, all, all of, the, of the process of the school uh, was to think how the technologies can be addressed in, the, in different uh, contexts. And as a PSA is an organization that works a lot with community communication, they decide to focus a lot on community radio. But in the connectivity side, they work, they finally start working with uh, Povos da Floresta, that it is a very big, 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 big initiative uh, with a lot of uh, companies, a lot of organizations, uh, some of the local and state government there, involved, and they want to connect 5,000 communities in the Amazon in the next two years uh, or so. So what, how they are doing it? With Starlink. So uh, 
Yes, uh, if you travel to there, I, I was there in, in July, and, and you you can see the all the challenge that implies to develop a, a backbone to the Amazon and to reach the communities and to see the that this uh, the prices are very high and also the quality of the internet is very very bad, no? And uh, also in some communities they don't have electricity, so it is also a problem. One of the communities of the school that calls uh, Aldea Solimoes, uh, they only have electricity for three hours uh, in a day because they use a diesel uh, producer of energy, no? So they don't have electricity all day, so they, they can't use also internet or, or everything in all, in all day, no? So they, they, they did that. And in the other hand, we have another project that called Hermes, uh, and it is a project that uh, has been taking place since 2015, no? when we started to uh, think and develop uh, a technology that uh, can allow to the use of a uh, high frequency uh, to transmit some of the uh, data that is important in the communities. You know, maybe the internet is not only the only way to connect communities and to uh, to uh, face all the challenge that implies, uh, you know, you, you say that the education, the uh, access to health services, the uh, access to government services, etc. We can do that also through other technologies. So we develop Hermes, that is is a technology that allows uh, send uh, some type of data through this uh, through this type of networks. So uh, we have now different services. Uh, we can send an email. We can uh, send a public message between the community station, no, like a closed network. But also we can connect to the internet, one of the radio base, and so we can send a message to internet through uh, one, only one uh, radio base connected. And uh, we have these two, two apps. One of it is, is the, the administration, and, and you can also uh, get a bro browser. You, you can search things in one of these. And, and the other one is a, a message uh, app, no? And uh, we have developed this in two, uh, two main territories in the Amazon, uh, on the one hand in Rondonia in Brazil, and uh, the other uh, one in uh, with the Achar uh, nation in Ecuador. So uh, this so far we have these this, uh, two systems working, but we are work also, for example, in Chihuahua in Mexico, who is in, in the very mountain uh, Area very difficult to connect to, and this this type of technology is uh, used to for this area. So uh, very quick, what are the lessons we learned in in the Amazon? No, and in actually uh, it match a lot with uh, what we have le learned in the uh, community networks movement in general. No, uh, so one of the lessons and one of the most important lessons is that uh, local, com local complementary solutions are more sustainable because they have a direct link with the community's way of life, no? So and uh, they address the, the real needs of the of the of the communities. They in, uh, they enable environments and, and synergies between uh, sta different stakeholders is necessary, no? We don't. Uh, we can have this type of projects alone. We can have uh, a very good synergies with other type of stakeholders, including the government, including different organizations, and in some cases also uh, big companies or big operators. The choice of technologies to be used must be always respond to the context and the territory. No, the, I, I share with you two different technologies, in s only in, this, in these two cases, but we have many, many other options. So it is important to uh, make a good process of, the of selection of technologies because they are key to, uh, to address really the needs and uh, to, to face the challenge in different territories. Um, and as we saw in the, uh, in the Amazon School of Community Networks, the link to the uh, content creation and uh, community networks, it's, a, it's key, it's very key because 
the important thing of the network is not the network itself, is the things that, that uh, travel through this network. So it's important to, uh, to make a, a good effort in the, in the creation, in uh, content creation. And finally, capacity building is key, no? and digital literacy is key, but not to uh, only to focus in the tools or to focus in how to use the internet, but more like uh, how we can have a different uh, critical thinking of the technologies and then how they can be used for the uh, purpose of the communities and to address the real needs, dreams, etc. Um, just to finish, I want to invite you all to uh, to see more about these these projects. On the one hand, the community level network learning repository, they have all the information about the schools, and you can also see a lot of materials there, and you can share also a lot of materials there. We want to make it uh, as a collaborative space. And if you want to know more about Hermes, you can go through the uh, Rizomatica uh, website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, it that was really, really interesting. So this is the part where we can talk. And we don't have much time, but we have some time to, to, to have a little conversation. And I want to invite every, everyone who, um, if you have a question or a comment that you want to make, please do. Uh, also, the people in the Zoom channel and in the YouTube channel, uh, you can participate too. We will try to address your comments and questions. And I want to I want to start. Um, I, I want to give maybe like half step back in the in the conversation and talk about a little bit about um, because th this session is called uh, the Internet we want uh, with an emphasis on the on the word we. Um, so I think that the, the key concept here has to do with autonomy and and, and this is something that you in, in both of your interventions. Uh, but I, I want you to ask you a little bit about uh, the, the concept and the importance of autonomy regarding uh, internet connection, especially when we're talking about these specific communities, uh, indigenous communities that has a right to decide, but like how does uh, autonomy look like when we're talking? Carlos gives some, some clues in, in his presentation, but I, I would really like you to, to, to um, give a, a little bit of, of words regarding the, the, the importance of autonomy when we talk about uh, access. So, so yes, I, I, I think that the autonomy is the key to when we talk about uh, the future of, of the internet we want. Uh, I, because, you know, uh, these communities have the opportunity to, to think of the technologies and what they, they can manage to uh, you know to to draw the the uh, the type of access they want to have no so but but in this in this process capacity building is key no if we, if we think that the technologies uh, need to be uh, included in a w in different uh, types of life in different territories we need to depart from a very good critical uh, thinking of the technologies in which the communities can decide, no? The autonomy is not like a place when, where we can go and no, travel through and we have a very happy place in which we will be stay, but more like a process, a process in which we all have the, uh, the possibility to decide how we can address our, our problems and, and how we can go to, uh, follow our dreams, no? So if we understand that, the technologies are very helpful for the, for the communities, but only with this, uh, with departing from this, from the, the understanding of the risk, of, of the possibilities, of the all, no, the all the contexts that are involved in the technologies, and then to take decisions that help to the uh, to the solve the nails and and follow the dreams in each of the communities. Uh, and I think that in your intervention, you, you said something that was like very very important that has to do with like how to develop uh, a critical approach regarding the internet and, and connectivity and the role that connectivity has in our lives. And I think that that's uh, a challenge that it, it doesn't stop with, it's, it's not just these communities, it's all of us, like all the time. Like how 
can we think about an, a, an a different schemes for connection, like different ways to connect and, and the reasons why we connect? And that's not an easy task at all. At all. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious regarding your experience in the in the schools, especially like what how is the 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 when when people think about connectivity what 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 why are they thinking like what what did that look like what are their what they want to achieve with connectivity well uh, the the experience of of the development of the schools was uh, is very very uh, inspiring and interesting because we can see all the different a perspective of the connectivity of, of what we can uh, understand about a meaningful access, for example. No, so each of the five schools is are very different, completely different. No, for example, we we have here uh, in in Brazil one school that uh, have been work a lot in the uh, content production and community communication, but we have another school very good structured and more like in technical issues and you know in South Africa. And other one who decided to implement some uh, artisi artisi artificial intelligence uh, technologies in some communities with the fishermen and with the uh, uh, women who who take care of the stream farms there, no? So uh, so yes, we, we, we need to understand that the internet n is not one, no? In, I, I remember in Berlin, in the AGF in Berlin, we had a, a very big discussion about this uh, slogan that said that one internet for all or uh, uh, something like that, no? And, and I think as the Zapatistas in Mexico said, uh, uh, they say that queremos un mundo donde quepan muchos mundos is like uh, we want a world in which we can have a lot of worlds, no? So we c we, we want an internet in which we can have a lot of internets, no? Not only one way to connect. Uh, I think there's there's a, a question or a comment from the public, like maybe this is time. And go 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 ahead. Hi, my name is Wilson Guilherme. I'm from the youth program in Brazil. I live in the Amazon region of the Caltrain state of Rondonia, and uh, th that's why this spinal is very important to me. Having tough, it's the it is the zero of the event. I believe in the potential of the discussions to be held and the EGF. My question is, what are the possibilities of building in alliance at Lucky to building technology network to prevent U.S. imperialists like uh, Elon Musk from the domination world territory with two perspectives of sovereignty, the Amazonian people. Sorry, my English. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. My name is Paulo. I'm from Article 19 Brazil. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't listen to Camila's presentation, so I'm sorry. I'm going to refer to, to Carlos' one. I'm really glad that you mentioned uh, the Hermes project. And my question goes to everyone, actually, including for discussion. Um, it, we all know that you know, working with community networks and access, uh, connectivity, and so on, is quite hard to do in terms of hardware, software, knowledge, and so on. Um, but then people normally connect the, the idea of connectivity and access to the internet, to access the internet. And the Hermes, for example, is another project, is, is another idea. It's like connecting more the digital sphere than the internet itself. So my question would be, uh, what is the importance of having not necessarily the internet, but the digital technology in the hands of community? Um, given two different, um, you know, axes, um, two different things. One culturally, and the other one is material production, because digital technologies can help out, not necessarily with access to internet, but to help out the material production, what the communities are produ producing, and so on. And also the production of culture, like music, oral history, poetry, and so on. This not necessarily has to do with internet connection, but it has a lot to do with, um, you know, digital technology flowing in and out from the communities with the sovereignty and autonomy and so on. So thanks a lot. Hi, my name is Niels, in this case from uh, DW Academy. My question is to Camilla. Uh, what uh, can you share about the dreams from the community that you visited because you told it 
people are very attached to social media, but uh, what are the alternatives and what are really the, the needs that they dream of of what they can do on their territory with uh, more internet? Let's take the, the last one. Okay, thank you. My name is Camila from Bolivia. Uh, I only want a question. I have a question. I would like to know how did you address, uh, as you work with indigenous communities, how do you n how do you address about their I identity and things about because there is this crisis about having the internet, have the development and everything you know. But I, I as I work with the indigenous communities too, I know they have also this thing about they don't have uh, maybe some information about their culture on internet, and so they want to be in internet, but also they want to support that. Uh, how, how what is your experience with that when with this kind of schools? Or things, how do you work with that, with their identity, and how to combine these, right, like the digital access, but also don't lose their uh, identity. Thank you. So, who wants to go first? I, I think Camila has some stuff, so it's your turn now. Thank you. Okay, I can start. Um, first, a news question about the dreams of the community. Uh, one of the reactions was that no one asked us how internet should look like no one uh, prepared us to use that so their willingness is also to have more connectivity but also more understanding on how can they use the internet this is very interesting but we have a challenge of autonomy and how do they choose because uh, it's easy to have one big company that brings all the solution as Starlink but people don't have knowledge enough to think about alternatives such as networks, uh, communities. So it's important to develop also this digital literacy so ca they can have um, the informated autonomy to choose what kind of internet they want. I think this is important. But related to, to their culture and their context, this community in, in specific in Brazil, it is really close uh, to the capital of Amazonas. So it's, it's a community that um, is, uh, has their, they have their own culture, but they are very uh, interconnected with the big centers. So when they are using the internet, they use more to expand, uh, to lower the distance and to expand to other spaces and their culture is more developed on that. But uh, yes, they face some challenges on how to keep their culture. And about uh, Will's question, uh, it's a big challenge, right? Because it's so seductive to have a company that says, you will have the internet in, lo in a low term, but I cannot guarantee that, uh, that you're not going to be at attached to me, like really dependent to me. I cannot, um, I cannot say about the prices in the future. I cannot talk about the environmental issues. So we, ha we have to think some alternatives. And we were talking about a little about the right to decide autonomy. And we have to have more spaces to hear people in the end. When they're making public policies, they don't hear civil society that much. And they don't hear that much the communities they're affected. I can talk about civil society in general. We face lots of challenges on participating, for example, on the community of the Universalization Fund in Brazil. Uh, we have to ask them an a specific authorization to participate on that. The Telecommunications Authority, they have public consultations, but they have in a lower term. We have some challenges that the Telecommunications Agency is very close to the private sector, but we have some participation spaces such as uh, the, con um, the consultant committee, we have the uh, consumer uh, committee also, and uh, in part of EDEC, we try to participate actively in these spaces to bring some other perspectives. But beyond civil society talking about homogeneous problems, we have to hear people in the end also. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think we can have this all these uh, questions uh, with a sake or a beer, because it's very difficult to, to try to give an absolute answer, no? But uh, what one thing that it I think is important is to the part that w as we have the, the, the right to be connected, we also have the right to be disconnected. And this is, this is very important. If you want to, s to see some discussion about it, we have a blog in, in, this, uh, in the Rhizomatica site, uh, because we, we also think that we need to have this right uh, very in, uh, well understand, it, no? that we can have the, this right to be disconnected. Uh, and uh, so on the, uh, this is on the one hand. On the other hand, 
these technologies help a lot to maintain the, the identity and to uh, rethink also the, the identity in the community. No? We have uh, seen in, in a lot of communities that we have this problem between the young and the, and the old people because they are uh, discussing a lot how is the best way to address these technologies and how no how we need to 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 include in 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 the in the in the life in their lives so uh, it is it is it is important to start to generate that dialogues be before to uh, to include the technologies i think this is this is one of the keys and also uh, between the the indigenous itself they have a lot of knowledge of what are doing the other communities no so they they look other experience a lot in their territories and outside of the territories and they can uh, start uh, thinking how to uh, to use these tools to reinforce their identity no of course we can't uh, think that it is white or black process no uh, they they understand that that they want to to be connected but they understand also that they uh, want to be connected with some limits that for example in a community network we can have no we can limit the the oper the time of the of the network are operating for example no so the some communities decide that that uh, after 8, 8 pm they don't have internet connection for example or if you are in in youtube more than two hour two hours you you can't uh, connect more no so uh, yes i i think i think the key is that uh, understand that uh, there is no only one solution that uh, a lot of these solutions have a lot of risk no of course to be connected with some uh, guy who, who who can decide to turn off the satellites and uh, no and say that you can't have internet because i have a bad day <laughs> it, it is a problem no the body it is also a a solution that need to be understand by the communities so the, if the communities understand this risk and can how can manage it this has, is 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 the uh, the key i think well, um, thank you so much, both of you. Thank you so much for all the questions. We're running out of time. Uh, I, I just want to say that uh, I, I think in, in the end, what, what's important is to think about why do we need the internet? What do we need connectivity? Uh, what do we want to achieve with that? And, and as Carlos said, that th there's no a single answer to that question. Uh, there are many answers, and, and the, the shape that connectivity takes has to do with how we answer that specific question. Um, but as I say, like we're having, we're running out of time, sorry. Uh, just I, I just want to give you, both of you, uh, one minute for final remarks. Uh, but before that, I, I want to say th thanks to, uh, well, everyone, everyone for, for coming here, uh, Michelle for doing the online moderation. And as Carlos said, uh, there's a lot of questions that we can, we keep on discussing with sake or beer or just water maybe at this time of the day. Uh, so let's keep talking. One minute, each of you. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I would also like to thank Lua Cruz, which leads the telecommunication part in, in EDEC. He has an amazing work. I learned a lot from him. And he also helped with, with this research and helped me a lot with this presentation too. I uh, hope we can continue this dialogue. Like we have a consensus that we no size fits all. So we have to think how can we advance on that? What are the specificities that we need to develop and hope we can continue this conversation. So thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the exchange and thank you for, oh, for you for being here too. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for having me. And uh, we need to, to know that there is another option to connect and to, uh, to have access to uh, te telecommunication services. So we need to depart from that and from that di dialogue between different uh, stakeholders. So thank you very much and, and have a great IGF. Have a great IGF. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, on your way out, please take one of these. Uh, if you unfold it, it has a really cool poster that you can, I don't know, do something with it. <laughs> the other way around. OK, so it's there. Please take one. Thank you so much for coming. And hope to keep on talking regarding all this stuff. Thank for all the technical team too. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>